You are now listening to Tune In Slice of Health by Chola MS General Insurance. On our second episode of Slice of Health, we have Shweta Subaya, a fitness coach and health trainer, talking about the importance of resistance training in one's fitness program. The episode starts now. What do you think would happen to your arm if you rested it on a surface for an entire day without moving it? Well, I don't recommend you try it, so let me just tell you. There's a high likelihood that by the end of the day, your arm would feel lifeless and getting it to do anything, example, holding a uh, glass of water and trying to take a sip from it, would feel like the most tedious task. Hello and welcome to this podcast with me, Shweta Subaya, where I'll be taking you through why movement is so important. Um, and especially in today's work from home culture and environment where movement has hit an all time low. Just to give you a quick and brief introduction to myself, I'm a sports performance coach and one of four Nike certified instructors in the country. Having spent a couple of years in the corporate world before quitting to pursue my passion for fitness by becoming a fitness instructor, which come to think of it now is well over a decade ago, um, I have a keen understanding of why so many individuals in the corporate world end up with the aches, pains and injuries that they do. While the topic of this podcast, which is the importance of muscles and movement, may seem mundane to some, especially to the younger listeners here, as most of them are yet to experience the effects of a sedentary lifestyle, it is probably most relevant to this demographic in preventing what I have come to see as being the story of every other young individual living the stereotypical urban lifestyle. The subject matter of this podcast and the need to educate individuals on the topic at hand has become more important now than ever, especially since the start of uh, the pandemic, um, where uh, work from home has become the new way of life. Before diving into this topic, let's take a step back to check our understanding of a couple of keywords. The first word is fit, F-I-T. Now, I want you to take a second here to just think of what comes to mind when um, I say the word fit. What are some of the things that you think are actions to describe a fit individual? Is it the ability to lift heavy weights or is it the ability to run a marathon, complete a hard trek up the mountains, perhaps? Or maybe it's something simpler, just to climb a flight of stairs without feeling breathless. Maybe it's just keeping up with your young, energetic child. Well, none of those definitions are, or understandings of the word fit are wrong. But just to give you a textbook uh, definition of the word FIT. It is the ability to perform your day-to-day tasks efficiently, with vigor, and with minimal risk of injury. I'm just going to let that soak in and I'm going to repeat myself so it really, really sinks in. So being fit is the ability to perform your day-to-day tasks efficiently, with vigor, and with minimal risk of injury. I bet a lot of you at this point are thinking, well, by that measure, I guess I'm pretty fit. Uh, I'm sorry to burst your bubble there, and I'll explain to you why you were probably wrong in thinking that way. See, human beings were designed to move. Muscles are key to movement, and movement in turn is key to physical fitness. Now, that's a point I'm going to repeat. Human beings were designed to move. Muscles are key to movement, and movement in turn is key to physical fitness. Movement and muscles are codependent on one another. Now, what does this mean? So movement is the key to keeping our muscles strong and in balance and ensures that they are not wasting away. You see, muscles are bound by a principle known as use it or lose it, um, aka muscular atrophy. Going back to our example or the opening question, which is what do you think would happen to your arm if you just rested it on a surface and didn't move it for an entire day? This is, of course, a very ambitious idea of what might happen in a day. But surely over time, if you were to leave your arm resting without using the muscles, that those muscles are starting to waste away. Um, The reason being is perhaps quite historic if we go back to uh, human beings and, uh, you know, what our instincts are um, as far as our body is concerned. Our body is always looking to conserve calories, right? Um, And this perhaps goes back to uh, when we were a hunter-gatherer society or when there was shortages in food and there was a lot of starvation. So the body started to learn to conserve calories. And that's pretty much hardwired into us today, even though it's been a while, at least for most of us, where we have encountered a 
uh, a, a situation where we were starved. Uh, but anyways, the body does uh, fear starvation and tends to conserve calories. Now, by definition, or uh, you know, uh, from a physiological perspective uh, or anatomical perspective, um, muscles require uh, energy in order to stay alive, to be maintained. Uh, energy, in other words, is calories. So if we are not using those muscles, the body then assumes those muscles can uh, are not uh, worth you know supplying calories to. And that's why they sort of, I guess, the use of the muscle tends to die out. The body doesn't fight to keep it alive. So uh, it's very important for us to move those muscles to tell the body and the brain that, hey, you know what, I'm using this muscle to keep me alive and supply me with the necessary calories, right? So that is sort of where we are going with the whole uh, movement is key to uh, keeping the muscles alive and preventing muscular atrophy. But at the same time, muscles are also key to movement. Uh, movement, uh, muscles are attached to bones and movement occurs when muscles contract or relax. Example, if you want to take a drink uh, or a sip from a glass of water, uh, a command is sent from our brain to contract or re relax certain muscle groups in order to perform that action. See, um, because muscles are attached to bones and when we want to say bend the elbow, the bicep muscle contracts, therefore pulling uh, the arm uh, and shortening it. Uh, so that we can have that sip sip of water. And then obviously, if we want to put set that glass of water back down on the table, uh, the bicep muscle relaxes while the tricep then contracts so that we can straighten our arm again. So um, that is sort of the relationship between muscles and movements. They both are dependent on each other. Um, you know, without uh, muscles, there is no movement. And without movement, uh, muscles tend to to die out. Hence, uh, the more physically active we are, the more we are using our muscles and then by definition, staying fit. So the next point, or this brings me to the next point, is that why is it uh, that so many of us are unfit today uh, in today's urban uh, setting, right? I mean, uh, hopefully by now, um, you know, using the examples that I've given you, you're starting to understand why, you know, you, today's uh, urban individual is is experiencing the, the, the aches and pains that they are uh, owing to, you know, lack of usage of muscles and, you know, uh, reduction in, in just movement. Um, but anyway, sitting for long hours with minimal movement means some muscles are being overused while others are being wasted away. When this occurs, we are uh, uh, we are you know, sort of uh, encountering some sort of a muscular imbalance. Okay, um, I want you to think of um, perhaps a regular uh, day in your life where you are sitting at a desk and table, um, crouched over and banging onto your laptop or desktop, whatever it is. Um, you'll notice that you know in that position the muscles in the anterior or front part of your body, particularly your chest, uh, your hip flexors, your abdominal muscles are constantly engaged. Whereas the muscles in the posterior part of your body, which is uh, your back in particular, um, they are not being used um, because they're just sort of like hanging over. Um, and this really is uh, what I mean by muscular imbalance uh, in the urban lifestyle is because uh, primarily, I would say the desk job where people are engaging posterior, the anterior muscles so much and completely sort of uh, ignoring uh, muscles in the posterior chain uh, really starts with an ache and a strain. Well, to offset this, there is a need for exercise and overall physical activity uh, to increase, right? Uh, now that I've introduced the word exercise, I want you to think about for one minute what you think that means. Does it mean uh, lifting weights? Does it mean, uh, you know, uh, running uh, uh, a long distance? Um, again, uh, I bet that most of you all, when I use the word exercise, have the right ideas that come to mind and what entails exercise. Um, but just to give you a textbook, uh, again, a textbook definition of what exercise is, exercise is planned, structured, repetitive, and intentional movement intended to improve or maintain physical fitness. 
I'm going to repeat that one more time because this is very, very important that you understand uh, what exercise really is. It is planned, it is structured, it is repetitive, and it is intentional movement intended to improve or maintain physical fitness. Now, this word exercise um, is somewhat new in the grand scheme of things. Um, you see, when we were, uh, you know, a farming, an agrarian society, or even, um, you know, working in, in, in factories of manufacturing where we had to perform physical manual tasks, our muscles were being used. And um, like I said before, uh, muscles are key to movement and movement is key to physical fitness. So we were using our muscles uh, adequately back then, but today we aren't. And that is why it has become important for us to plan for movement, to make it structured, intentional and repetitive. Um, and that's why, you know, um, it is absolutely crucial uh, that we set aside at least one hour, three times a week. I mean, ideally, I would like to see somebody moving every day for at least an hour. But, uh, you know, we have to sort of move with the times and understand what is possible within a limited time frame and multiple responsibilities. But, um, you know, uh, planning for one hour of exercise at least three times a week has become absolutely crucial in order to just make sure that our bodies are functioning uh, optimally and we're not pushing towards injury. <clears throat> um, today, it has become more important than ever before to exercise because urban lifestyle has minimized the need for us to move and for us to move uh, use muscles the way they were designed to, resulting in a number of uh, issues, including postural deviations. Now, uh, I'm going to name three of the most important postural deviations, um, and I can assure you that even to the untrained eye, which is someone like you, you would be able to look at an indiv individual and see these postural deviations, which is really uh, uh, offset by inactivity and uh, lack of movement. The first one is called kyphosis, where you will notice the individual having a rounded upper back. And this one is the most common and is uh, seen most with individuals who work um, at a desk. Um, this is, you know, really the stereotypical slouched over position and, you know, uh, working on, on, on the laptop or the desktop. And that's why over time uh, that sort of posture becomes the way they move. Even when they stand up and they're doing other things, the back is still quite rounded because those muscles have become weak uh, and certain other muscles have become more tight than they need to. Uh, the next one is lordosis. It, it's where the lower back is extra curved. So uh, this is typically uh, seen in individuals who are carrying excess fat around the belly area. Uh, also very common amongst pregnant individu uh, individuals, although that uh, seems to correct itself post uh, delivery and uh, post pregnancy. But yeah, you will notice that individuals who maybe because of lack of movement most likely uh, have developed uh, big bellies and uh, excess weight around the uh, belly area and hence to support that weight the lower back is excessively curved um, and the final one is scoliosis where it is a complete deviation of the uh, spinal cord it's almost like s-shaped which um, uh, which is uh, usually something that people are born with and they can only manage it it's hard to correct scoliosis um, and it's not uh, often um, related to a sedentary lifestyle. It is more genetic. Uh, so while kyphosis and lordosis is something that we can definitely correct, and um, scoliosis, however, isn't. And the way to manage and correct kyphosis and lordosis is, of course, through corrective exercise and movement. Um, muscle imbalances and uh, the resulting postural deviations are really the starting point of a number of injuries. Therefore, the top goal of exercise uh, for many of us today is prehab or injury prevention. Other, go other goals uh, often come after. Um, and uh, I will say this, that every time I have a new client come in to start training with me, they usually come in and say that their goal is to sort of um, either lose weight, gain muscle, 
or maybe train for a particular event like a marathon or something like that. Uh, but I always sort of uh, curb their enthusiasm, uh, for lack of a better phrase, and, you know, tell them to take a step back, understand what their lifestyle is. Pretty often to my trained eye, I'm already able to uh, observe some of the issues that their bodies have due to their uh, lifestyle, which, uh, you know, is some form of kyphosis or lordosis or, you know, maybe uh, some other sort of um, uh issue due to a muscular imbalance and my primary goal before you know going after the goals that they have in mind is to really correct those issues because to train with um, you know uh, muscular imbalance is only going to push you towards injury rather than performance so it's important for you if you are training um, with with a professional for them to be able to identify what your pre-existing issues are and unfortunately you know it seems like nine out of ten people who i see have some sort of an issue that requires correction before they can go after their other goals um and uh, yeah that has really become such such a crucial element now that we've sort of understood that exercise is important, uh, for a lot of people, they don't know where to start. So I'm just going to give you a quick uh, sort of brief summary of the five components of exercise, five types of exercise forms that you need to sort of keep in mind, whether they're exercise forms or a better way to describe them is uh, things to sort of address when you're planning your exercise program um, and make sure that you address all five of them if possible. You know, you do something twice a week and then do the other two, the other two times of the week, um, so on and so forth. So just to take you through it, the first type of component of exercise rather is cardiorespiratory fitness. Uh, this is your body's ability to keep up with an exercise like running, jogging, swimming, cycling. Basically anything that forces your cardiovascular system, that is your lung, heart, heart and blood vessels to work for an extended period of time so it's good to plan for a run or a you know a jog or a, a swim once or twice a week then the next uh, component of exercise is muscular endurance uh, this is the body's ability or the ability of your muscles to perform contractions for extended periods of time so here rather than lifting or carrying something for a few seconds the muscles are used for a few minutes perhaps uh, the way to increase strength is to train with light weights working say for 20 to 25 repetitions um, working with lighter weights will tra train the muscle fibers needed for muscular endurance okay um, the next component which is going to be different from the previous component is called muscular strength this is the maximum power extended by a muscle or a group of muscles against a resistance. Uh, this is the power that helps you lift and carry heavy objects without, um, without muscular strength. Your body would be weak and unable to keep up with the demands placed upon it. Uh, the way to increase the strength uh, here is to train with heavier weights, working for either 4 to 6 reps or 12 to 15 reps. Uh, the heavier the weight, the fewer reps you should be performing, right? Uh, now, just to stop you here for a second with muscular endurance, most or uh, muscular strength, endurance, uh, all of that actually, most of us work uh, for long hours at a desk and we are not performing any of the other uh, movements that our bodies were designed to perform. Uh, maybe that includes lifting something heavy from the ground. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of an individual who spends most of his or her day working at a desk. Uh, really just to make all this money to take that great holiday at the end of the year. Um, now, let's say it has come to the uh, holiday season and you've got your bags packed and you're all ready to take off uh, on that holiday. You get to the train or the, the, the plane and you have to now lift your heavy piece of uh, baggage from the ground to the overhead compartment. Uh, more often than not, and this has become such a common one, which is why I've cited it as an example here, when people try to do this movement because their muscles haven't been used, they've sort of those muscles that are the primary muscles that one needs to lift that heavy object off of the ground and put it in the overhead compartment have not been used, one ends up with an injury because the muscle is just not able to support that weight. So here you are working for those long hours 
you're making all that money to take that big holiday, but you can't, uh, you know, even start the holiday because you've ended up injuring yourself. Now, in, again, in order to prevent that sort of uh, situation from, from occurring, it's important that we factor in exercise as part of our lifestyle somewhere, um, even though we have jobs that really sort of, uh, you know, work against the body's need to keep uh, muscular muscles in, ban- in balance, right? Uh, moving on to the fourth component of um, exercise, that's flexibility. Um, this is to increase the range of movement around a joint. You know, exercise workouts are like uh, you know Pilates, yoga, and just general stretching help with this. Um, and then the final component uh, of exercise is body composition, where you maintain your fat percentage uh, to uh, below a certain per- percentage uh, or within a range to ensure that, you know, you have uh, equal amounts or not rather equal amounts, but a proportionate amount of fat percentage and lean muscle. So those are your five components of exercise. Now, the need for exercise would uh, be significantly reduced, especially from a prehab perspective, if we just increased our overall physical activity levels. Um, And some of the small changes that we can make today without really planning for exercise as such is just to walk more, take the stairs, um, get up from your desk every uh, hour just to take a quick walk around, maybe sneak some exercise in during your TV time, um, get yourself a fitness tracker so it keeps you in check and tells you to move if you're not moving enough, and maybe just stretch from time to time. Other important things that we obviously need to be mindful of as well to stay fit is nutrition. Um, because when we, let's say, finally do incorporate exercise into our uh, lifestyle, if we haven't already, um, we will need that nutrition to support uh, our muscle development. Uh, muscle repair and growth happens post-workout. It is crucial for us to ensure that our muscles get the right type of nutrition. If not, muscles become catabolic and eat in, into themselves to fulfill their nutritional needs. So we need to prevent that and make sure we're eating right. Rest is another very, very important thing and crucial thing that we need to look at. Uh, When we generally work out and do exercise, muscles tear and uh, recovery and growth happens when we rest. Besides training with lack of sleep could also lead to poor performance and significantly increase the risk of injury. Finally, we need to manage our stress levels. When we are stressed, our body releases cortisols, which spikes our blood sugar levels. And then that, of course, if not utilized for activity, ends up being stored as fat. And again, we end up with excess fat. And um, like I said, going back to the lordotic um, um, uh, postural deviation where the excess fat then accumulates around our belly. And then in order to support that weight, Uh, we have an excessively curved uh, rounded lower back. So really uh, just to watch out besides, you know, incorporating exercise to think about things like nutrition, rest, uh, our stress levels are also going to be equally important. Anyway, now that you are equipped with all this information, I hope you'll think twice about resting that arm for an extended period of time um, and that you incorporate planned movement or exercise into your daily lifestyle. That's it from me. I hope you found this podcast interesting and informative. You can follow me on my Instagram handle, which is at Shweta Subaya, where I post regularly content of uh, subjects of similar nature. I'll also be happy to answer any questions you may have for me there. Thank you and have a great day.